You are listening to Podolsky to come to you to talk Haunted Vermont. However, in this season, we're going to take a look at some very interesting folk lore, urban legends, and some true crime. So, stay tuned and get your spooks on. The intriguing mysteries and unexplained events associated with Bennington Triangle have caused many to speculate widely about the possibility of mishaps, paranormal forces, disappearances, UFO, Bigfoot sightings, and more. Others believe that the births of missing people between 1945 and the 1950s may have been the work of a serial killer. But the sheer lack of evidence to back this up as well as the variety in the victims' ages and genders to find the usual patterns of serial killers likely ruled out that theory as well. Others still contend that the disappeared met their demise at the claws of a mountain cat such as a lynx, bobcat, or a catamount. However, bobcat and lynx are not known to be aggressive to humans and the catamount has not been credibly sighted since before 1940 and has been declared extinct. All in all, when trying to tie the disappearances together in hopes of discovering a solution to the mysteries, there's a little to go on. The only known similarities between the most well-documented cases in the Bennington Triangle are the cold proximity of the disappearances, the time of day, when most were last seen between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m., and the time of year when most were last seen, the final three months of the year. And with the little in the way of evidence, paranormal theories concerning the cases have taken hold. For those interested in the paranormal, such theories dovetail with other, more recent odds occurrences in the Bennington Triangle area. These occurrences include terrifying voices showing up on dead air radio, sightings of mysterious figures, unexplained navigation mishaps, and planes that mysteriously crash. The Bennington Triangle is also like the Bridgewater Triangle. The Bridgewater Triangle is in Massachusetts and also is in the form of a triangle where everything inside the triangle has everything from disappearances, paranormal, UFO, Bigfoot, everything in this triangle. If you'd like to learn more, check out the Bridgewater Triangle documentary on Amazon Prime or check out their merch at the Bridgewater Triangle documentary.com for more. Now, let's get back to some of the Bennington Triangle missing people. So, we know that between 1940s and the 1950s, there has been some. So, let's give you a little rundown of who and what got, unfortunately, met their demise or have yet to be found. So back in 1943, we have Carl Herrick. So in 1943, Carl was enjoying a hunting trip with his cousin, Henry, 10 miles northeast of Glastonbury Town. The two became separated, and Carl never returned. Henry found Carl's body three days later in a bizarre scene. Carl's ribs had punctured his lungs, and the postmortem indicated that something had squeezed him to death. Henry reported that there were large bear prints around the corpse. However, experts say a bear would not have squeezed a man to death. 
1945, a 74-year-old by the name Mitty Rivers was a local hunting guide. Rivers led a party of four hunters around the area of Hell Hollow in the southwest woods of Glastonbury before he was suddenly lost. After an unsuccessful search, many still believe that this knowledgeable woodman would be able to survive and soon surface in town. However, this was not the case. Soon, more than 300 concerned locals and U.S. Army soldiers dispatched from Massachusetts Fort Devon combed through the vast wilderness for eight days, turning up not a single shred of evidence as to the whereabouts of rivers. Now, this next case that we're about to share is, in fact, still an open case here in Vermont and has been the influence behind our short film, The Terror Trail. Now, you may be wondering why, so here's a little rundown of Paula Weldon. Paula Weldon was 18 years old who disappeared on December 1st, 1946. She was a student at the Bennington College who decided to one day hike a leg of the Long Trail during Thanksgiving break when most of her peers had returned home for the holiday. She was last seen on Sunday, December 1st, 1946, wearing easy to spot red and entering the Long Trail near Glastonbury Mountain. Weldon never showed up for her Monday classes, spurring a massive search party of more than 1,000 people and a reward of $5,000 despite the large turnout, numerous aircraft utilized, and variety of assistant law enforcement department, no clue to her fate were ever discovered. Many, including Weldon Fodder, criticized the authorities' lack of methods in handling the case, which actively served as the catalyst for the founding of the Vermont State Police seven months later. The case remains open to this day. So, she was wearing red, and that is exactly what, unfortunately, two people of the characters in Terror Trail, our little short film, which is available on YouTube, is actually wearing. So, in a way, this was the inspiration. So, does wearing red make you disappear? Hmm, but you can also check this out on the Vermont Governor's, on, you can also check this out on the Vermont State Police dot Vermont dot gov site, and it will be under the unsolved cold cases where Paula Weldon is still in need of finding answers. Even though this is 74 years later, I really don't know if any member of her family is even still alive, or if anybody really. And if they are, I'm assuming they still have no idea what happened to her on that very day. James E. Tedford, who was 68 years old, also disappeared in December of 1949. Supposedly Jane boarded a bus to Bennington after visiting relatives in St. Albans, Vermont. Numerous eyewitnesses, including the driver, later confirmed that Tedford had been in his seat as late as the last stop before Bennington. Yet, when the bus finally pulled into Bennington, Tedford was nowhere to be found. After he implausibly vanished into thin air while inside a moving vehicle, Baffled passengers noted that Tedford's luggage and an open bus timetable remained on his seat. If the witnesses are correct, Tedford would have disappeared from his seat as the bus was traveling down Route 7 through the Bennington Triangle. Here is another case that inspired another little small story of our film The Terror Trail. Paul Jepson. Jepson. Paul Jepson, eight years old, who disappeared October 12, 1950. He was last seen happily playing in the family pickup truck by his mother, who left to tend to pigs at the dump where she and her husband were caretakers. Then, 
he vanished without a trace. In addition to the hundreds assembled for a search party, a New Hampshire sheriff brought in a bloodhound to sniff out the missing boy. The dog was able to pick up his scent but abruptly lost this trail at a nearby crossroad suggesting a possible abduction by a motorist. As the case dragged on without resolution, some suggested that Jefferson met an early demise at the hands of his parents and was dinner for the pigs. But, in keeping with the eerie feeling of the Bennington Triangle, the boy's father told the Albany Times Union that it was perhaps, and I quote, the lure of the mountain, unquote, that pulled in his missing son. As the boy had, and I quote, talked of nothing else for days, unquote, prior to the disappearance. Frida Wanger, who was 53 years old, also disappeared in October of 1950. Only about two weeks later, after Paul Jepson, 53-year-old Frida Wenger, an experienced hiker and survivalist familiar with the area, went missing on the Somerset area of the Long Trail bordering East Glastonbury. After hiking a brief half-mile with her cousin, Herbert Eisner, Wenger fell into a stream and set back to their camp to change her clothes, where her husband was resting with a hurt knee. But neither her husband nor her cousin ever saw her again. Helicopters from the Connecticut Coast Guard and U.S. Army in Massachusetts, as well as local aircraft from citizens and the Vermont Aeronautics Commission helped search for Wenger. As many as 400 people, including Massachusetts National Guard, searched the surrounding areas, yet found nothing. But soon they did find something, and this became the only known disappearance of the Bennington Triangle where a body had turned up. Six months later, after she went missing, Wenger's corpse was found near the Somerset Reservoir. Curiously, an open area that had been searched extensively numerous times in the previous months, yet even with a body, the case saw little resolution. The body had decayed so badly that no cause of death could be determined, only fueling further speculation about what kind of disturbing end she might have met. And that is a little taste of the Bennington Triangle. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. And just like always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share. Because it's always interesting to learn more about the unknown.